Hello and welcome back to Dynamic Character Productions. We are on our Survivor Monte Carlo exit interview tour and we are here with our 15th place uh, player, Miss Julia Dorkin. Julia, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm living life in Tulum right now. It's hard to complain. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Actually on the island. Uh, Actually. Having a good time. Um, I am Ian Moorhead, one of the hosts, joined tonight by my co-host, Morgan Jackson. Morgan, good to see you. Good to see you as always. Julia, I'm excited to talk about your game and just get into it. And we are joined by Lily Petzold, as always. Lily asks all the hard-hitting questions, so Morgan and I don't have to. Lily, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm great. I'm ready to um, get the ball rolling and see what Julia's got on her mind. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so just to start off, Julia, this was your first online virtual game, correct? What were your thoughts correct. about it? And yeah, just general consensus. Yeah, I mean, I think for me... Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was really nice to meet with different people from different walks of life. So I thought that was really cool. Different time zones, different countries, cities, um, career paths. So that was cool. I guess I, as I mentioned a little earlier, I did not realize what a time this was multiple weeks. And given like my job set up as well as my maybe personal life, social calendar, uh, I didn't really bake in what the time commitment would have been in order to not even succeed in the game, but really to like make the time commitment to engage with enough people to form real relationships and alliances. Even if I did that at the outskirts, I could have probably done more there. So it was an interesting experience nonetheless. Yeah. And I think a, a huge part of the beginning of the game <clears throat> that's different than most is that you were stranded on an island with everybody. So not only right. is it very overwhelming when you're on a tribe, but when you start off, you have to try to connect with everybody. How, um, what were your thoughts on that? Was it overwhelming, more exciting? Cause you got to find people you clicked with more. Just what were you thinking? I loved it. I mean, again, to your point, it was like the time when you couldn't speak to everyone. So it was kind of like a mix of who reached out to you, who you kind of got an initial feel for that you wanted to get to know at the outset. Um, some of that for me was based on just like how often someone spoke, what their like vernacular was like, if they mentioned something about where they were from that related to me. So I was trying to find components of things they were giving away where I could relate and find something like uh, in them. Um, but it was really, really challenging. You know, I forget exactly. It was 18 people, maybe another 17, like how you winnow down within even like what it was two days initially, uh, who and how many people you talk to, especially because I think we initiated it on like a Thursday, you know, like, uh, and I had plans on a Friday night. So, it was, you know, no full work day on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. And we see a lot in the first episode or the first two episodes when it was, well, when everybody was together, we hear a lot about you, how you're really personable, really easy to get along with. Was there anybody that you felt like you were clicking with right off the bat? And then did those people happen to be on the other tribe when you got split? So they were, I'm, I'm going to forget their names. I feel horrible with this already because it's been like two months since we did this, which is funny. But uh, there were two guys uh, who I clipped with one guy from Canada, maybe Nick is his name. And then another guy from Philly. And I'm blanking on his name. I want to say David, maybe. That's Will. Well, thank you. Uh, where the, the two of them really, like, I feel like we were like, we could have gone kind of to the end together. We definitely got each other. And then the two of them were on a different tribe. Um, I really, really did though enjoy. There was a guy who was like in music school. There was a guy who was in film in Canada. Like I liked them too. And they were on my like tribe as well. You know, it was funny. I ended up getting voted off when I was at a family dinner in Miami, like <laughs> the table, like, sitting there. And my, my family was just like dying of laughter. But I think effectively, you know, there were certainly more I could have done. And I think I would have gotten along with a variety of different people from different walks of life. Part of my job is to do that. And I really actually get excitement and joy out of it, but I didn't have the time to really commit to doing that and, and talking strategy. It was more, I, I genuinely do enjoy getting to know people. And uh, I'm glad to hear that that was received on their end because it is genuine. Yeah. yeah I, I really appreciate, like we, we have people every every season like about the time commitment kind of stuff I think I appreciate how much like the time commitment really didn't work with your schedule like even now it was, uh, I, I like I was emailing with you I feel like at a certain point yep. like 
wait, what? Wait, fuck. It's like 9 p.m. on a Tuesday versus a Thursday. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, even uh, now, like, even now, like, it, I, I, I can tell you haven't even had time to watch the episodes. I mean, you're at a bachelorette party right now. Like, I'm literally <laughs> like, yeah. I was well, to give you like, you're going to laugh at this. Literally last week, I was in Dallas for work, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Minneapolis, Thursday, Friday. Was here this weekend for a, ba- uh, a wedding in Jersey we went down to. I was here Monday, Tuesday, and just last city to Tulum, having knee surgery on Monday, and I get back Sunday night. Like, I'm just like, go, go, go. So, like, it's not that I'm too busy for people. I, I think that that's like a really rude quality in others, but I just like am a very scheduled person. So, I didn't, I don't like to commit to things that I can't um, uphold my end of the bargain. And I just, I think I just miscalculated what this was going to be. I thought it was like, you know, an hour multiple nights a week or whatever it was. And I could, I could do that, but not didn't realize the gameplay was all day, every day for two yeah. months effectively. Yeah. And in the episodes, there were multiple people were trying to find a reason not to vote you. I, oh, I hate it's that. Just, <laughs> it, it's amazing because I know we know what kind of time you put into the game versus everyone else. And it was amazing to see people grasping at the smallest or the skinniest of straws to try and keep you. And I think well, that- I felt like such a dick when somebody was saying something like, who, I guess I forget exactly who I voted off at first, whatever the, the one where I got voted off, but I was like, damn, like maybe there's a shot. And I felt like an asshole, <laughs> like taking somebody when it was blatantly me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I honestly would totally, I mean, if you didn't ask the question, but like, I would totally go back and do this is like a one day thing. Like, I think this is awesome. What you're doing have definitely told friends to do it. It's just really hard. The time commitment given like my schedule and, and a lot of honestly, my friends, like I, I didn't forget exactly through, um, if it was Zach Kriegel or Josh Debovitz, who you knew through this for Keen, but like, it's the most fun thing. I was explaining it to them. They're so funny. Like we're ride or die people. It just, for our schedules, all of us, like it would need to be like a mini in like a one day. I'm like, I would totally do it again if it was under hey, that we, we, we have those and there's applications out right now for one. So. Oh, oh my God, I would totally do that. That's I'll like, I'll send I'm it in. to you as soon as we're done. Please, please. <laughs> I honestly, that I just didn't realize that no one kind of, exp- so not to give feedback, but like that would be like, to get like the most out of everyone, I, I think I would have wanted to know that it was like way more than I, just astronomically more time than I realized. I, there was no way I could have done this. Yeah. I remember when I first, because I did the previous season, when this yeah. first happened to me, it was the same like shell shock. I was like, oh my gosh, people are like doing this all day. I don't have access to my phone during the day. Yeah. You know? I don't even, I can't even access when you're texting, like when you're emailing me on Facebook, I'm checking because I'm at work and like you don't have access to Gmail or Facebook from like mm. 8 a.m. to like 6 p.m. And then I'm like generally taking clients out for dinner. So like, I don't hit you until like nine. And then I realized here there's a time zone difference, which is like a whole other thing. (laughs) (laughs) It is a shock. So I think definitely it, yeah, it's hard, especially if you're a planner. I'm not a planner. So I was able to (laughs) throw everything out the window, but totally you Uh, seem booked to the nines, which is awesome. (laughs) Negative quality. I got to work on it. Not at all. But you said you were, you really enjoyed it. So there was the last challenge that you missed and there was sucking water <laughs> with a straw from one cup to the other, building a stack of cups and cards and then a puzzle. If you were there, would you have wanted to play and which one do you think you would have gone for? I think I always want to play. I'm definitely like the kind of person who wants to like take their own destiny into their own hands um you describe I actually didn't know what they were it was sucking water I think I could do the sucking water thing whatever you describe versus like building something I think even from the, the challenge I did do well which was like the rolling of the pencil down to the nose or whatever like oh, yeah. generally I have really weird like physical quirks where I think I have a large <laughs> mouth I talk a lot I think I'd be able to suck water and pop it into a bucket pretty well <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I would pick too. I would, I think you would be good at the cup. And I mean, we ultimately see it, right? That's where Mike struggles. And I think you, you might've had a good chance of kind of pushing the tribe to a win if maybe yeah. you had gotten in there and, but who knows? Yeah. It's all luck of the draw at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Those are really all my questions. I don't know, Ian and Morgan, if you have any. Yeah, uh, we have some Facebook questions for for Julia. Morgan, you got those pulled up, gal? 
I do. And I just want to preface some of the questions, you know, we've already kind of discussed. So if I skip your question, it's not personal. We just have kind of already touched on it. Anyway, uh, first question is from John Milsip. Uh, How do you feel you would have been able to navigate the game had you had enough time to dedicate to it? So, you know, if the commitment, like the time hadn't been an issue, you know, what do you think your game would have looked like? I think I would have been fairly strong at challenges um, and would have known where to pick my spots, but I think ultimately would have come down to the social game where I think I am adaptable enough to a variety of different personality types. And I think I like to think that I'm a genuine person. And I think that would have come across where people would have felt comfortable wanting to engage me in whatever their plans were. So A, and then B, if people weren't engaging with me where I recognized, you know, how much of a time commitment this would have been, I could have seen that if I were being kind of left out, I would have known how to like jump into something or wouldn't be shy about speaking to somebody that maybe was pulling away from me and trying to work in what was really going on behind the scenes. Um, so I think my social game would have been stronger, but I think I would have been still strong in the challenges as well. I, I think a, a huge quality in a survivor player is being self-aware. And I think you are a very self-aware person um, whether or not, you know, any of the three facets of the, the game would have been, uh, as good as you thought. I feel like I think you would have done well had the time commitment not been as big of an issue as it was. I just think, I, so. um, I love this game. <laughs> I just think you could read situations better than not most, but better than some people, it's, even with the speed of the game, I think that you yeah. would have think you would have done well, which is why, you know, come back for that one day mini. Yes, but I honestly will. I'm very excited about that. I want to hear that because that I can like definitely do. I would definitely love to see you in a mini. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Next question is from Michael Zucker. It was said by some members of your tribe that one of the reasons you were targeted was because you were close to some people on the other tribe. And whether during a tribe swap or merge would be something, someone likely to flip over to those people on the other side. Um, So like uh, Will and Nick were two of the people you mentioned you were close to and they ended up being on the other tribe, right? Um, So if you had made it to that point in the game, whether it was a swap or a merge, do you think that's something you would have done? Um, Totally. Shamelessly. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, shamelessly, I think you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I think you know you can form friendships and alliances where you can, and you can find commonalities with people. But there is you know, in the in the real game of Survivor, when you watch it on CBS or when you're playing here, there are certain people you just gravitate more towards, and it's a little bit more seamless. And so the ability to build that trust quickly super important. And so I just felt that commonality in terms of how we thought about it, even though by the way, like. I think the three of us in that example were like very different people. So I think, you know, like even Nick's style was definitely more like he wanted to be in every conversation for, for sure. And like I was getting information from him, which was great. And I think Will maybe took a bit more of a back seat, but kind of picked his spots and I was probably more absentee, but like it was, everyone had their um, skill set in their ability to gather information. We shared it and trusted each other and knowing how like philosophically we wanted to play together. So I liked that at least. (laughs) (laughs) Self-aware. All right. Next question is kind of a funny one from Alex Trias. It has to be asked, what did you end up ordering when you were out for dinner during your tribal? That is a great question. So this is kind of funny and probably long-winded. We were in Miami. My sister lived down there during COVID. So we were visiting her before she moved back up. My mom made us go to dinner at Prime 112 or is that what it's called? Prime 112, I think. Uh, and the guy who owns the restaurant, she had gone on dates with in high school. We're with my dad and like our family. And she is like standing up there, like flaunting her stuff and is like ordering everything on the menu. So we ended up doing some like crazy, you know, fish chicken, but the crazy thing there is the desserts. And they have this crazy like beignets, chocolate molten lava cake thing with 
sparklers. And so that's what we ended up ordering there. And in addition, if that wasn't cool enough, Shaq came over and the entire Clippers were having a party there that night after I got voted off. So, <laughs> so cool. Did you tell Smile. them you got voted off? I'll send a picture if you guys are interested. I can send a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, McKenna from your game asks, do you think your experience would have been different had you not won the first individual immunity challenge? Do you think, no, no. (laughs) You think you would have gone home? Oh, Oh, like our, our, our tribe. You're saying if I had so, won, would I be voted out first? If, if you remember the very, very first challenge we did was an individual challenge. Right. And there were uh, eight people that won and nine people that lost. And you were one of the eight people who won. Um, so you didn't have to go yeah. to the first tribal council. I, I still, I still would say no in that. Like, I think that the beginning I like kind of was trying to play more and really tried to carve out time when I realized what was happening of like how this was going to be way more of a time to, and I realized I was going to be voted out sooner rather than later. So I think the first up to that tribal, I was like in it and hope that I wouldn't have been voted out. It certainly helped me because I wasn't playing or as time committed as others. But I think, I still don't think so. I, I, I think I, I, it's really hard for anyone to have gotten to know 17 people in that time. And I think I did is I gave it my all at the first kind of three days is what I would say. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, that's all we got from the Facebook questions. We so Lily, like, finish us off. Yeah, we always like to end our exit interviews with the same question. And it is, if you can sum up your game in one word, what would it be and why? Some people hyphenate it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. But she's a planner. We didn't give her maybe, time. Maybe, maybe <laughs> like, oh, I'll try this up. Experiential. Oh, okay. And like, if it, needs, if it needs an explanation, it's more like, you know, like I really had a really fun time. I really enjoyed it. It was nice to meet you people. Like it was a really well-rounded experience. And it was an experience with which I wish I could have given more, but I still really enjoyed um, all around. So I, yeah, I have nothing negative. I think it was a very positive, fun thing to do. Yeah, and I love that you guys are doing this and I want to support you guys. And it's like, I wish I could have done more. Aww, I love it. Um, I have a question I'm asking this season. Uh, even if you have to give me a description of who they are, give me one person that you felt like impressed you while you were playing. Um, you felt like when you talked to them, you were like, man, they're just, they know what they're doing or like, even if you talk strategy, maybe like you talk with Nick and Will, like strategy from them that impressed you, just one person. The the person I'm forgetting his name, I'm gonna butcher this, I'm sorry, is um, the guy in Canada who's involved in film and stuff. I think he had played once before. He was very different from me very like even keeled gave nothing away in his like verbiage or excitement level but was like super interesting super smart and uh I actually thought was very self-aware in some ways like knew how to like toggle me even if it was outside his comfort zone so I thought he was I I don't know how far he actually got but he was fantastic and I thought he would have gone like all the way actually I thought he was very good all right. Well, Lily, anything else to add? No, I love this. It was a lot of fun. I hope yeah. that we get to see you in a mini. <laughs> I know. Send it to me. I honestly, like, if I can commit like a day or whatever, it is, I'll even take off work. Like, I just need to focus on it. I just, um, I didn't realize what I was getting myself into negatively. I don't know, positively. I don't know. So I just, I appreciate what you guys are doing and I love this. So I'm down to play next time. Yeah. All right. Well, Hopefully we'll be seeing Julie again very soon, but you saw her here tonight on her exit interview for Survivor Monte Carlo. I'm Ian Moorhead. That's Morgan Jackson. This is Lily Petzold, (laughs) and that is Julia Dworkin, and we'll see you next time on Dynamic Character Productions.